Let's say the newer generation, uh, uh, because what has been money, and uh, basically when you have an economy, you burn energy, whether it's oil, natural gas, coal, whatever, whatever the energy is, and it's all it. Then it's human labor, or animal labor, horsepower, whatever. And, and so you burn energy, you create goods and services, and money has always been the store of this energy value that we we tend to we trade, and that's been gold and silver. Then fiat money came in, and now it's been Bitcoin. And so the new thing is Bitcoin. Now, what's in front of you here? Mm -hmm. A lot of the a lot of the Bitcoin mining was in China, but then they realized that、uh, Bitcoin was becoming, as Ed Hears says, a tapeworm on the grid. And so they decided to get try to get rid of it, and they got rid of a large portion of it and moved to the United States. And a lot of it is in Texas, and they're public companies. So you could see how bad the situation is if you look at their SEC filings. So Riot Platform and Marathon are digital are two of the biggest Bitcoin miners. And guess what? In Texas, they're building the largest facility. It's called the Corsicana facility. This thing is we, right now. What you see is there are there going to be four buildings. They're going to have actually ten buildings. When they're done within about a year and a half, ten buildings. Now, a lot of people say Bitcoin uses wasted energy or stranded energy. They're going to tap into flared natural gas. That's a cottage industry because the capital to to tie into natural gas that's being flared, it's too expensive to do that on a small basis. And then what happens with the natural gas disappears as it, as it peters out. So. They're not really using a lot of stranded gas or wasted energy, because Riot Platform put its facility right next to a five gigawatt switching station. They're going. They need that huge power. So, what I noticed now, this is、uh, Corsicana, which is the city. <clears throat> But what you'll see right here, where、uh, the, the 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 facility is going to be built. It's going to be 400 megawatts this year. They're going to move it up to a thousand, one gigawatt, one gigawatt. Well, they they say they're going to be using solar. And if you looked in 2021, they opened up the Brer Creek Solar. It's 153 megawatts. But basically, you know, and Simon knows better than I, you get about 25 percent capacity、uh, on a 24-hour basis. So you're only going to get about 38 megawatts out of that, and then. There is Duke Energy just opened up another even bigger solar, and it's 250. But all you're going to get is 63. So if you add these together, it's 100 megawatts of of real capacity solar. That's only one tenth of what their capacity is when they ramp up by 26. Now, let's go to this slide because you could see Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth. Huge. These are metropolises, and the suburbs are moving south. Well, the red line and the arrow shows you Navarro County. And the interesting thing is, there are people now, locals, that are、uh, having anti-Bitcoin legislation, and the local, the, the government is starting to wake up because when this thing gets up to full capacity, it's going to consume one meg, one thousand megawatts, which is about. The power to drive six hundred thousand homes. <laughs> There's only twenty one thousand homes in Navarro County, so a lot of the Bitcoin people are have been hoodwinking a lot of these local areas that they're going to just use waste and energy. And so this is this is what they're saying now. This is bad enough, but Riot, this is their what they're going to increase right now. At the end of 2024, they're going to get to 400 megawatts. They're going to get that Corsicana up to one gigawatt, probably by 26. Then they're going to double it again. Oh my it's god! Just, it's just, and this is just Riot platforms. So、um, now I bring you to the next slide because. The Ericot CEO stuns Texas officials with new estimate for power needs. He said that rising demand they were it was going to grow from eighty five thousand megawatts to one hundred and ten thousand megawatts by two thousand thirty. He's now estimating it's going to be one hundred and fifty thousand 
Why? Because half of that is due to crypto mining and data centers and AI. And so the idea that Bitcoin is going to help the grid come in and use this waste and energy and shut off when you don't need it uh, or when there's too much power, it's a lie. But this is the issue of these politicians and what's happened. Politicians were given money, donations, to allow the Bitcoin mining industry to move into these states, especially Texas. But now they're starting to wake up. This is not good. It's not really good for people. Uh, and so the funny thing is, and Simon, you'll get a kick out of this, the Texas Blockchain Council, the Texas Bitcoin miners has sued the U.S. Energy Department over data usage survey. You see, they're using so much energy now, which is why China wanted to get rid of them. They're still there, but they're using so much energy now. The EIA and the Department of Energy wants to know what the hell is going on. But they sued them that they didn't want them to have that survey. Now, that was back in, in February. Well, the U.S. government launches a new attempt. The EIA is launching a new attempt because they need to understand what this power is. Because it's, it's starting to, I think they're going to get into trouble in the ERCOT grid unless they really start to understand what these Bitcoin miners are doing. To give you an idea how much power the Bitcoin mining industry is consuming in just the United States now, Bitcoin consumes about 60 terawatt hours of power a year, and that's going to continue to grow. Jeez. It is, wow. it is right in the middle between all the states. We see Texas is the largest, 475 terawatt hours. They have a lot of industry there. And then you got Vermont down at five. You've got Bitcoin at 60. It's right in the middle. And that's going to continue to move up. And then you gold, all the gold that we produce in the United States was about five and a half million ounces. It's only 13 terawatt hours. So I don't think people really understand the damage that is being done by the new high tech uh, Bitcoin mentality. Now, the problem is now I'm, uh, I'm getting to the end here. The problem with Bitcoin and, and it is the riot platform has showed us in their SEC filings. And if you look at this blockchain.com, they show you the depreciation. Basically, the depreciation of Bitcoin miner shows you how long it's going to last. By two years, the thing is, is lost 90% of its, its of, of functionality. Most of the Bitcoin, 75% is produced in the first year. You get about 15% more in the second year. And then by the third year, it's toast. So you, wow. the capital destruction in the Bitcoin mining industry makes mining look like, you know, like, like the best thing since sliced bread, because mining doesn't depreciate like this, even though it's capital intensive. And so what the market doesn't realize is that Bitcoin mining is unprofitable especially after the halving. And I've done the research. There have been other people who have done the research. Right now, it would take Riot platforms to break even second quarter. They would need 163,000 Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's now trading at like 55. So it hasn't been profitable because of the massive destruction of capital in the Bitcoin miners. I mean, in two years, they're basically toast. No bank on this planet would lend to the Bitcoin mining industry with that kind of capital destruction, which is why the problem is the Bitcoin miners had to do, had to issue shares to fund business in the last three, four years. It's, it's like a, a sleight of hand. They have destroyed the shareholder value by issuing all these shares to get this money to continue the Bitcoin Ponzi scheme. And I really call it a Bitcoin Ponzi scheme. And so when you understand that, that's bad enough. It is a scam, I think, because not only are they looting the shareholder, because that's the only way they can get the funds to continue doing this, is they're, they're taking this money and they're also enriching themselves. Look at the stock-based compensation for these two companies, Riot and Marathon, these are the two largest in the United States. They just paid themselves $143 million in the first half of this year. 
And so I just wanted people to realize the mindset that we're facing about this peak oil, because I'm, I'm with, with Simon. It's so frustrating because we're competing with the new high-tech religion of technology is going to solve all of our problems. And when I try to present this information, I get the same the same negative feedback that Simon does. Some people who they're, they're either their mind is thinking correctly or they're not in it just to get a, a, a higher Bitcoin price. That's all it is. It's a speculation. And they really don't care. They don't really they don't realize that the Bitcoin mining industry that allows Bitcoin to function. I think if the price doesn't go up, it's going to disintegrate. I think the Bitcoin mining industry is going to collapse the public Bitcoin mining industry. And that's bad news for Bitcoin. And so I, I wanted to share that information because moving forward, uh, I think we're going to be dealing with this mentality until these this energy starts to become more scarce and the price goes up because there's no way, and I'll conclude here, there's no way we're going to be able to ramp up AI and data centers and, and Bitcoin mining. We're not going to really have the energy to do that in the next six years. So I think the rubber is going to start to hit the road here in the next several years. Simon? So, Steve, excellent presentation like always. So you know when you had that graph, you know when you had that graph with the depreciation of Bitcoin, where yes. the first right. Do you know my my brain likes patterns? What what jumped out of the screen uh, for me there? There is actually something else that deteriorate that, that depreciates exactly like that. Yep. I don't know if you know what I'm about to say, but it's like a um, a fracked oil well. Yes, production. it is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you got it. Okay. All right. So yeah, I was going to say yeah. it was worse than fracked oil. <laughs> Yeah, but so, no, he's he, he's right, and I think I think they say Satoshi. He's the one that designed it, designed uh, Bitcoin. That's that's the suggestion. I I think he has no idea. He had no idea if this is true that he designed this. Uh, whoever designed it had no idea the long term implications of of mining Bitcoin as more proof of work, uh, harder. I mean, it's half the amount of Bitcoin. In April 19th, these companies now get half the amount of Bitcoin for the same block. And that's going to happen in another four years. They had no idea the tremendous amount of energy that was going to be needed to continue doing this. Again, I think they thought in the energy tooth fairy. And so now I think Bitcoin is going to hit the energy return on investment sooner than later. And what do you think will happen when that happens? This is speculation, uh, but there's there's an issue. There is a the problem is that the one thing people tell me, oh, Steve, you don't know what you're talking about. The the, uh, the difficulty adjustment will be adjusted lower, and that that's happened. The issue is when we you get such a collapse in the public Bitcoin mining industry, I think that's coming. You're going to see so many Bitcoin miners just shut down because it's not it's not really profitable for them to do it, and they've only done it by looting shareholders. When you start seeing those Bitcoin miners come offline, it's going to decrease the, the difficulty adjustment. And you know what? There is a problem called the Bitcoin security protocol. And if that if that gets too low, then enough Bitcoin entities that control enough of this Bitcoin hash hash rate, they can actually do a lot of hacking. It can get very unstable and no one is really considering this. So. I just think in the future, more local and state government people uh, are going to get involved and they're going to realize this is just a waste of power. It's a tapeworm on the grid and it really doesn't provide any social value. So I, I think that's coming too. Okay. Yeah, that 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 was really great presentation. And yeah, I just wanted to add, because I know that the uh, BRICS nations were thinking of doing a cryptocurrency, but my understanding is it's not a proof of work, but it would be like a permission-based or uh, something right. like that, like a different kind Correct. of system that's not so energy intensive. Yeah. Okay. So Steve, do you think that um, crashing Bitcoin would have a, an effect on the broader economic market or, or broader economy, or is it likely just sort of take itself down? Well, you know, that's a good question. And uh, I look at these markets and it's it's fascinating. If you go back about three years, you look at uh, the price, the Dow Jones, 
the price of silver, the price of gold, Bitcoin, they all tended to bottom in, in 22. Uh, they came down, they bottomed, then they went up, went down a bit, and then they, and now the Dow was at a new high or close to it after the, the big takedown or the big uh, correction on Friday. But they all went up, they're going up and down together. So to say Bitcoin is a, a safe haven, you know, it, it's a, against the market and fiat doesn't really hold water because it's a flow of funds. It's liquidity. Everything's moving in and out of assets. And I think when we start we're hitting a recession in the United States, and I think it's going to start spreading uh, around the world, that you're going to see uh, the the markets roll over. You're going to see Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin does not go up to that 1200, 120,000 level or above where it needs to be, it, it's going to destroy the Bitcoin mining industry. It, it'll destroy it within about a year or two. So I don't think Bitcoin going down is really going to impact the overall market, but I think it's going to go down with the overall markets.